I had no idea, actually. Okay. I just saw the for sale signs as I was pulling in. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 American companies that don't exist anymore. It was an airline like no other. For this list, we'll be looking at once iconic US-made companies that have since retired, merged into something new, or on the very edge of being entirely extinct. Some of the brand names may still be used, but the companies themselves have faded with the times. Which American companies do you want to see make a comeback? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. American Motors Corporation Nowadays, it feels like US companies merge every other week. In 1954, though, it was jarring to see Nash Kelvinator Corporation merger with Hudson Motor Car Company, forming American Motors Corporation. At this point, it looks like the rebels are going to outlast the teachers. At $355 million, it was the largest corporate merger for a period. Even with that sizable amount, American Motors was still only America's fourth largest auto brand, trailing behind Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. Despite some success, AMC struggled to compete with the big three, eventually being acquired by Chrysler in 1979. The AMC name would persist until 1988, when it was renamed Jeep Eagle Corporation before completely merging into Chrysler two years later. How fitting a company born from a merger ended with another merger. They're tough. Tougher than ever before. Even the toughest American cars can't beat big business. Number 9. Gulf Oil Everything we do makes driving better for you. Commencing in 1901, this big oil company's main backers were William Larimer Mellon and his uncle Andrew. What started with a $10,000 investment developed into one of the Seven Sisters oil companies. But by the early 40s, Gulf Oil was among the 10 largest U.S. manufacturing companies. By the end of the 70s, it could still be found in the top 10. You, you guys certainly give good service. Thanks. We make it a point to give good service. And we're competitive in our prices, too. In 1985, though, Gulf Oil merged with one of its fellow Seven Sisters, Standard Oil of California, being rebranded as Chevron. At the time, it was a record deal of more than $13 billion. In today's style of living, yes is the way to go, and Chevron says yes. The Gulf Oil brand name still exists with various companies buying the trademark. However, the original titan that inspired a Pennsylvania skyscraper no longer casts its massive shadow. Number 8. Coleco Coleco went through an intriguing evolution, starting as the Connecticut Leather Company in 1932. As the name suggests, the company initially produced leather for products like shoes. When their leather moccasin kit performed well at the 1954 New York Toy Fair, the company shifted gears. By the early 60s, Coleco was officially a toy company, making plastic playthings in pools. After a failed experiment with snowmobiles, Coleco entered the electronic realm with Telstar and ColecoVision. ColecoVision, the only system you'll ever need. Although the video game crash came as a blow, Coleco had another life preserver. Cabbage Patch Kids. You can love and care for them like your very own. You're a pal. Following the peak of Cabbage Patch Mania and the infamous Atom Computer, Coleco filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1988. Ah, she's a beaut. You can't beat a Coleco. How many can I put you down for? A lot? Please say a lot. I need this. While the company itself is defunct, the brand name was resurrected in 2005. Number 7. Showbiz Pizza Palace. Speaking of video games, did you know that Nolan Bushnell, Atari's co-founder, also brought us Chuck E. Cheese? Chuck E. Cheese is better than ever! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Despite some recent financial hiccups, this chain remains the leader in arcade-styled children's pizza joints with creepy animatronics. They had a very specific competitor in the 80s, though. Businessman Robert L. Brock entered a deal with Pizza Time Theater, Chucky's owner. When that fell through, Brock founded Showbiz Pizza Place using a similar model. At Showbiz, we make pizza good and we make pizza fun. Brock seemingly came out on top as Pizza Time Theater filed for bankruptcy in 1984, merging with their competitor to form Showbiz Pizza Time. However, all Showbiz locations turned into Chuck E. Cheese joints by 1992. While it's debatable who won the pizza war, the Chuck E. brand proved more enduring. Number 6. Steinmart Are you like me, where you love name brands, but you don't really like the prices? That's why you have to come to Steinmart, because you get more fashion for less price. When a company is around for more than a century, you assume that it's a permanent mainstay. Such was the case with Steinmart, which opened its first Mississippi location in 1908. The store shared the same name as its founder, Sam Stein, who immigrated from Russia. 
What started as a general department store evolved into a discounted clothing company when Jake Stein took the reins from his late father in 1932. Steinmark continued to grow over the decades, but the company struggled financially during the late 2010s. With stock prices plummeting, Steinmart announced plans to go private in February 2020. Yikes. The plan is to close most, if not all, of its 281 locations and stop online sales. The pandemic caused Steinmart to file for bankruptcy six months later, closing all stores and relaunching as Steinmart Online. To all the people that have been loyal to us, um, it means more to us than you could absolutely imagine. Number five, Borders Group. Borders started as a used bookstore in Ann Arbor about 40 years ago. Expect all stores to close by the end of September. In 1971, brothers Tom and Louis Borders opened a bookstore while studying at the University of Michigan. The Borders brothers expanded their business after buying out War's bookstores, which had been operating for 80 years. Ironically, War's lasted longer than Borders, which still had a respectable run of almost 40 years. Things took a turn for the worse in 2007, though, when Borders ended their deal with a little online retailer called Amazon. Borders figured that they could launch their own online store, but sales fell $1 billion over the ensuing years before finally filing for bankruptcy in 2011. After 40 years, the bookstore chain is now in its final chapter. All 399 of its remaining stores, including three in Rhode Island, will be shut down over the next few months. Borders would sell to its longtime adversary, Barnes & Noble, which has managed to survive a global pandemic and the wrath of Amazon. You go, Barnes & Noble. Getting the news today, it's upsetting. We tried. Number four, Toys R Us. Childhood is fleeting, but Toys R Us is forever. From bikes to trains to video games, it's the biggest toy store there is. She wins! I don't want to grow up, cause baby if I did, I couldn't be a Toys R Us kid. Actually, scratch that. Nothing lasts forever, especially companies run by a talking giraffe. In all seriousness, Toys R Us was a childhood staple that struggled to adapt. Like Borders, Toys R Us entered an online retail agreement with Amazon in 2000. When Amazon violated their contract, the toy company walked away with $51 million in damages, $42 million less than desired. Amazon remained a competitor along with Walmart and Target. This is a challenge Toys R Us is having along with a lot of bricks and mortar. It's a lot of competition right now from the digital world. It was all downhill after filing for bankruptcy in 2017. The final U.S. Toys R Us locations closed in 2021, ending a streak of more than 70 years. Yeah, I feel like kids are going to miss out on the best store ever. I still love the store. However, WHP Global sought to revive the brand that same year, giving hope to Toys R Us kids. Number 3. Gimbals. Decades before throwing Toys R Us a lifeline, Macy's defeated its longtime department store rival, Gimbals. In the vein of Coke and Pepsi or McDonald's and Burger King, Gimbals was locked in a consumer war with Macy's for much of its existence, even sparking the phrase, does Macy's tell Gimbals? Opening in 1842, Gimbals predated Macy's by 16 years. See you at Gimbals. War was declared when the Pennsylvania store expanded to Macy's New York stomping ground in 1910. Ten years later, Gimbals launched their annual Thanksgiving Day Parade, with Macy's starting their own just four years later. And we are having a terrific time. The parade is the best that I've ever seen. That's the big news in town, everybody, the fact that Santa is here. Despite the public feud, the companies coexisted until 1987. Failing to meet the profitability standards of Baddest Retail Group, Gimbals entered liquidation. Well, I guess Macy's and Gimbals learned to live side by side. Gimbals is gone, Marge. Long gone. You're Gimbals. Macy's won, but without Gimbals, Betty had no Joan. Well, I said what I came to say. I'm going to bed. Number two, Pan American. Say hello to a brand new world. Say hello. 2022 scheduling meltdown, many wondered if Southwest Airlines was destined to become the next Pan Am. This led to younger generations to ask, what's Pan Am? You might recognize this airline from Hook, which came out only a week after this American airline ceased operation. 
First taking off in 1927, Pan Am came to be synonymous with luxury and international air travel. It was second to none. I don't think you'd even see it in some of the finest restaurants. Pan Am turned flying into an event, but the expenditures required to meet those high standards could only be sustained for so long. Following a series of financial woes, the Gulf War provided the final nail in the cabin, with fuel prices rising and fewer people traveling. Unfortunately, we simply did not have the financial strength to absorb the enormously adverse impact of these external events. At the time of declaring bankruptcy, Pan Am had the second most recognized trademark globally. Pan American Airways went bankrupt and they shut down services. It broke people's hearts. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Blockbuster We're not sure what's more surreal, that video stores are essentially extinct, or that people under the age of 10 probably won't even recognize one. Fast checkout, 24-hour quick drop return, open late every night. Well, the perfect video store... Welcome to Blockbuster Video! ...is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. Before streaming provided a limitless gateway to entertainment, you had to drive to a video rental shop like Blockbuster or Hollywood Video to select the flick you wanted, assuming they even had it in stock. Oh, plus they have all kinds of video games for the kids. It was a lot more fun than it sounds, but even the most nostalgic Blockbuster patron can understand why such a business couldn't compete with the rise of streaming. 2010 marked the beginning of the end, and by the decade's conclusion, only one privately owned Blockbuster remained. Its various partnerships folded, and stores worldwide were rapidly plunged into administration. We're closing early. Its 9,000 strong chain had been reduced to one single franchise in Bend, Oregon. It even inspired a Netflix sitcom, which got canceled after one season. That's twice that Netflix killed Blockbuster. No one has anything to worry about. Oh boy, the creepy animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese, where a kid can be a kid. <laughs> I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> I love those commercials. 